Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Mike Anderson. Continuing our annual fishing reports this week, my first guest is Todd Caspers. Todd, you manage Devil's Lake. First of all, let's talk about the walleyes in Devil's Lake. Let's talk about populations and size structure. Yeah, all right. Um, you know, this last year during our test netting surveys, we had oh, about 22 walleyes per net, which is a little bit above average of about 21 or so. So the overall numbers are, you know, pretty close to average, just a little bit above average. Um, in terms of our size distribution out on the lake right now, most of the kind of size groups of walleye are, are right around their long-term averages, except for kind of that 15 to 20 inch size group, which is the ones the anglers really like to keep. Those are really nice size keeper walleyes. Those are a little bit below where the average is. Um, kind of the reason for that is that from 2013 to 2015, we had lower reproduction each of those three years in a row, which isn't typical on Devil's Lake. So when we give it those fish, you know, a few years to grow up, when they should be, you know, in this 15 to 20 inch size group roughly, when there weren't as many of them to start out with, there aren't as many of them a few years later. So that's the majority of the reason why there's fewer of those nice size keepers right now. Okay, do you th is there any reason to be protecting those fish? Um, no, I mean, our overall, like, mortality rates on Devil's Lake are on kind of the low end of what is considered average. So that means that anglers aren't harvesting too many fish. So um, regulations really wouldn't do much about that situation. The, the main problem was just that lower reproduction for those three years all right in a row. Okay, is reproduction good for walleyes? Yeah, overall it's it's pretty good on Devil's Lake for walleye. Um, we do stock as well, but usually we have a kind of a mixture of natural reproduction and stocking. And from 2013 to 2015 again was lower, but from 2016 to 2018 we had pretty good reproduction. And we did stock walleye in 2016 and 2017, but then we didn't in 2018. And we still saw a nice year class in 2018. So that one was all natural reproduction for sure. Okay, what, what are the plans for 2019 as far as stocking walleye? Um, we are gonna stock some walleye again, probably about a half a million fish, um, just to kind of try to get another good year class right in a row. And then also kind of the eastern part of the lake is the salinities are kind of creeping up now that the lake has been going down a little bit. So it's saltier over there in that part of the lake and it's getting to the point where it might start to impact natural reproduction somewhat. So we're just gonna try to bump up reproduction over in that part of the lake. Okay, uh, do you anticipate a lot of walleye fishing in the coolies this year? Um, yeah, there should be some of that coolie fishing this spring. We have a pretty good snowpack in the, in the watershed this year. So assuming it's not a really slow melt and all soaks in or something like that, there should be a good amount of current coming down those those coolie areas, and that tends to attract fish up into those areas. When there's not much current, then it doesn't attract very many fish, and anglers don't do very well. But this spring should have enough runoff to draw fish up into the, some of those areas. Those are the spawning walleyes? Yeah, I mean, it's spawning walleyes and pike as well. And later on, sometimes if there's still current, you get some white bass, and those come up too, but it just depends on if they're still current to really draw fish by the time they're gonna get going. But Does um, catching those spawning walleyes, does that affect the reproduction at all? No, I mean, not at current levels. We don't believe it's really impacting the population really at all. Um, kind of a good example of that would be in 2009 when we had you know good coolie fishing in that spring, but we also saw a really good natural reproduction that year. I mean, that was our highest reproduction event we've ever seen on Devil's Lake. So, I mean, if the anglers were, were really tough on those spawning fish, you obviously wouldn't get to see a huge year class in a year like that. And walleyes are a species that have a high reproductive capacity. So it doesn't take a lot of fish of females to be able to produce a good year class if environmental conditions are favorable for those eggs to hatch and then the young fish to survive well. Okay, let's move on to your northern pike populations in Devil's Lake. Um, pike are doing well in Devil's Lake just like they have for many years. We have, you know, good numbers of pike and they tend to be good size as well. I mean, we have a lot of those kind of 21 to 28 inch fish, but we also right now have pretty good numbers of 
28 to 34 inch fish too. So. And we haven't stocked pike in many years. In like no, Devil's pike Lake. haven't been stocked since 93, I believe. So they reproduce completely on their own. Okay, uh, another big species in Devil's Lake is white bass. How are the white bass populations? Uh, the white bass had been getting kind of low because they hadn't done real well in their spawning, but in 2015 we had a, a good reproduction event and right now we actually have a like a record number of kind of roughly 12 inch white bass so they survived really well and you know now that we've given them f a few years to grow they're pretty good size they'll probably be around 12 to 14 inches this summer a lot of them so okay. yeah it should be good white bass fishing this coming summer okay and a lot of perch still in devil's lake um yeah we still have good number pretty good numbers of perch um they're a little bit above average. Um, numbers are um, probably more weighted towards kind of those smaller fish, like 10 inches and less. Um, but in the summertime, anglers don't typically catch. It's pretty catch, much a winter, yeah. Yeah, they don't typically catch too many in the summertime. Todd, how are water levels on Devil's Lake? Um, they're a little bit lower than we've seen these last few years. Of course, we're, we're still pretty high, relatively speaking. And we have a, you know, a pretty good snowpack in the basin so we should see a fair amount of runoff this spring if it's a, you know not a real slow melt you know our, i've seen the forecasts or for about maybe a foot and a half or so of of water level rise this spring so in addition to devil's lake you also manage stump lake and lake irvine which is part of the devil's lake complex how are the wa walleye populations doing in those two lakes oh on in both those lakes walleyes are doing pretty well as well on stump lake our numbers are above average and you know we have a lot of different sizes of walleyes available in some of, in that lake um, and Lake Irvine is kind of the same story we have good good abundance of walleyes in Lake Irvine and you know a lot of those nice kind of 15 to 20 inch size keeper fish okay how about pike um, pike are they're really abundant in Lake Irvine it actually wouldn't hurt for anglers to keep a few more fish out of Irvine because they don't have as much as we'd like to see for forage in Lake Irvine, so the pike tend to be a little skinnier than sure. we'd like to see. So it wouldn't hurt at all for anglers to keep their limit of pike from Irvine. But yeah, in Irvine we've got you know good numbers of nice sized pike to keep. And on Stump Lake, um, we have good, pretty good numbers of pike. They're not as abundant as they have been for some years, but um, they are pretty good size overall in Stump Lake. Is probably kind of our best average size pike is in Stump Lake. Okay, and both of those lakes also have perch? Yeah, um, Lake Irvine, there's not a lot of perch, um, but the ones that anglers do catch are usually really nice sized fish, but there's just not, not a lot of them. Um, and on Stump, we, we have good numbers of perch right now. They're above average, but uh, the, the size isn't really quite there yet. A lot of those fish are you know, probably kind of those 10 inch and less size fish. And white bass. Um, yeah, white bass is a fairly common fish in those lakes as well. Irvine, not so much. They're kind of the same situation as the as the yellow perch. There's not that many of them, but they tend to be good size. And on stump, we also have fair numbers of white bass. They're not as probably common as they are in Devil's Lake, but we do have pretty good numbers of white bass out there right now. Todd, any unique projects or anything going on this spring summer on Devil's Lake? Um, yeah, we will have a creel survey going on again this year. We try to do those about every three years or so. Um, and that'll run from about middle of May until the end of August. And then it'll pick back up once we get safe ice for anglers to ice fish on. And then, it'll, then it will go till about the end of March. Um, so I'd encourage any anglers to participate in the creel survey if they are stopped by one of our creel clerks because it gives us really good information to help manage the fishery. Let's switch gears, Todd. You also oversee the Red River and that's kind of a co-op management with Minnesota DNR. And the Red River is known for its catfish fishing. How are catfish populations? Um, catfish should be just about as abundant as they have been for these previous few years. Um, we don't have any real data on that from year to year. It's Population surveys occur about every five years for the Red River, so we won't have any more information till about 2020. Okay. What other fish species are in the Red River? Um, some of the common ones anglers would catch would be walleyes or saugers or um, some of those kind of lesser known species like carp or gold eye. 
Sure. And smallmouth bass in um, some of the way upstream areas. A lot of good information, Todd. Thank you. Thank you. Joining me now is Southwest Fisheries District Supervisor Jeff Hendrickson. Jeff, uh, I want to talk about each fish species separately, but let's start with walleyes in your district lakes. Yeah, walleye populations are pretty good in Hart Butte, Patterson Lake, uh, Bowman Haley, Indian Creek. Uh, actually, getting a few more online. North Lemon Lake is really nice walleye population right now. Uh, Odlin Dam, Spring Lake, Raleigh Reservoir all have good good walleye populations right now. Speaking of Raleigh Reservoir, you guys eradicated Raleigh about three years ago, roughly. Yeah. How's that? Obviously, the lake's doing okay. Uh, coming along pretty good. We put some larger walleye from uh, uh, one of the sloughs that were that was dying out. We put some of those in uh, Raleigh a couple a couple years ago, actually. Now and last year they did they look they were looking pretty good. Um, we also stocked it with walleye, so we got good walleyes coming up. Uh, perch and bluegill are getting well established. It's Water coming levels on. are coming up too. Uh, yeah, it's still about six or seven feet low, but it's coming up pretty good. It probably will fill this year with oh. all the snow. Okay, let's move on to northern pike populations in your district. Yeah, northerns are doing pretty well in Larson Lake and uh, in Henry County, and then um, in Kalina down. They're fairly abundant in both of those. We have them in several lakes. They're not as abundant, but they're they're also pretty good in places like Dickinson Reservoir, uh, Hart Butte, and uh, Bowen Alley. Okay, how about panfish? Panfish, we're looking at the usual uh, Mott Watershed, good bluegills uh, in Mott Watershed, Sheep Creek, uh, Odlin Dam. They all have pretty good bluegill populations. And perch are doing pretty well in Odland and Indian Creek. Okay, how about bass? Bass, uh, largemouth bass are doing well in uh, Camel's Hump Lake, uh, Mott Watershed. We had a, a minor winter kill last year and, and it took most of the bass. So that's not too good, but Camel's Hump is good. Uh, Sheep Creek and North Lemon Lake both have really nice bass in them, largemouth bass. Smallmouth bass you're looking at Hart Butte and Bowman Haley Dam, and there's uh, memorable size bass in those lakes. Do you have any trout lakes in your district? Yeah, we have several trout lakes. Most of them, we, most of them, we put and take, you know, because they die every year. But you know, we get a lot of the community fisheries have trout, like uh, Beach, Bellfield, uh, Dickinson Dyke, and uh, Creeks Pond, and um, those are. They're, we stock them every year. They they do pretty good. Sheep Creek has some too. You also do some stocking of gizzard shad. Uh, where and why? Yeah, um, why we stock gizzard shad is because the lakes we're putting them in, they, they um, forage species aren't very abundant for walleye, things like walleye and northern, so we're trying to enhance the forage base. And uh, we've been stocking them pretty regular in Bowman Haley Dam because that Bowman Haley Dam does, doesn't have anything reproduces very well in there. So so we really need them in there. And uh, last year we introduced them back into Hart Butte Reservoir. They have been in there before. Um, our relative weights or our walleye conditions is getting kind of bad in there. Growth is slowing. So we stocked Gizzard Chad last year. And only 100 pairs. But it's just enough to take the edge off and, and give them a little boost. Jeff, how are the water levels in your district lakes? Um, pretty good, except for Raleigh Reservoir, still a little low. Um, most of the other lakes are a foot or two low, but with all the snow we got this winter, we, we're expecting them to all fill up by the spring. Okay, and that leads to the next question. You guys just finished your uh, dissolved oxygen testing yeah. on your district lakes. What'd you find? Yeah, for the most part, kind of surprising. Uh, the places where we usually have trouble, Audlin Dam and um, Spring Lake and things like that, they're actually pretty good this winter. We have two in our district that are probably in trouble, Dickinson Dyke and um, Larson Lake in Henry County. It's kind of low, oxygen's kind of low there, but it's a northern perch fishery. And, Northern perch usually survive better than most other species, so I'm not real worried about that one yet. We'll find out this spring, but 
And the rest of them are marginal. We have a few like Dickinson Reservoir that's marginal, which is kind of surprising. But uh, it, it, it'll probably be all right. A lot of good information, Jeff. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Anglers are reminded they need a new fishing license starting April 1st. Licenses can be purchased by going to the North Dakota Game and Fish Department's website at gf.nd.gov or by calling 800-406-6409 or going to more than 140 vendor locations throughout the state. New this year, hunters and anglers will be given the opportunity to register as an organ, eye, and tissue donor. By clicking the link after purchasing a license, users will be directed to the North Dakota Department of Transportation Donor Registry. For more information regarding donor registry, visit DOT's website shown on the screen or contact LifeSource directly at 888-5-DONATE. For Todd Caspers, Jeff Hendrickson, and the rest of the staff here at the Game and Fish Department, thanks for joining us for this week's Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.